Hey, but it's Kenji. Uh, I'm going to be cooking some chicken and potatoes with lemon and garlic. This is one of the most, this is one of the sort of biggest bang for your buck meals I know as far as a uh, number of ingredients goes and, and uh, difficulty. It's, it's all very, very simple. So I'm going to start with uh, some potatoes here. These are Yukon Golds. You can really use whatever potatoes you want, but I find Yukon Golds, we're going to roast these and I find that Yukon Golds give you a nice balance of sort of creaminess and crunchy bits, you know. Um, they're also a nice size, they're these kind of size where if you cut them in half you get like a really nice big chunky bit. Um, if you were using other types of potatoes you can use, you know, smaller ones, you could leave them whole. Um, bigger ones you can cut them into quarters. Um, but I like to keep my potatoes really nice and chunky for this um, because that's how you're going to get that really nice contrast between uh, crispy exterior and tender creamy interior. Um, water, salt. If you wanted to, you could also add, you know, something like peppercorns or garlic cloves or you know, bay leaves or whatever to your potato water at this point. If you felt like it. I'm not, I'm not going to bother doing it right now. All right, so we're just going to simmer these until they're uh, tenderized, um, until they're softened through, until the outsides start to break down a little bit. It'll take, you know, once it comes, I started with cold water, uh, one or room temperature water. Once it comes up to a simmer, we'll let them simmer for about five minutes uh, and then we'll drain them. And in the meantime, we will do the rest of our dish. All right, so I'm going to make like a little marinade slash vinaigrette you know, dressing. Um, that we're going to use twice in this dish. So I have this fresh parsley that I just plucked off that, those stems. I'm going to give it a mince. So when you mince herbs like that, the best thing to do is to first bundle them up, like you saw me do, uh, and then cut that bundle up, and then after that you can go back and forth over it until it's as fine as you like it to be. We don't need to go crazy fine here. You know, we don't need like parsley dust or anything. Yeah, just some rough choppage. All right, so I'm gonna put that into this bowl here. Yep. And take one of these lemons. Squeeze it in there. Let's get those seeds out. I'm not too worried about leaving seeds in there. We're not in a... You know, at home people can pick seeds out of their food if they need to. All right, so we got our lemon and parsley in here. Now we're gonna go in with our garlic. So the garlic, I always like to add the lemon juice first. The reason is because garlic, um, the, the, the pungency of garlic is it comes from a chemical that's formed after the garlic cells are crushed. There's um, a couple of chemicals inside the garlic cells that once the cells are crushed, those chemicals mix. And then they form uh, allicin, which is the um, you know, the pungent aroma compound in garlic. Now that pungency can be tamed a couple of ways. First of all, um, depending on how you crush your garlic or how you cut your garlic. So doing it in a garlic press is actually um, a good way to make it extra sort of stinky because you're crushing so many cells and you're releasing so much of that um, uh, allicin, that chemical compound in there that gives it its pungency. However, if you mix it immediately with an acid, such as lemon juice, um, that chemical reaction is slowed down significantly. Um, so adding lemon juice to your garlic right after cutting it, um, as long as it's in an application where you're going to want to add lemon juice eventually, you know, um, like for, you, you know, so for instance, if you're making like say mayonnaise or, you know, a salad dressing, like a salad dressing or a marinade like this, where you're going to have, um, you know, or tahini or hum hummus, um, if you're getting some, anywhere where you're going to have garlic and lemon mixed together, um, if you add the lemon right after mincing the garlic, it will tame the bite of the garlic. All right. So we got lemon, parsley, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. So part of this is going to be something I add at the very end of cooking. So I'll reserve half of that. The other half I'm going to make into my marinade. So I've got this big bowl For that. I'm also going to add some granulated garlic couple teaspoons. I like to use a mix of granulated garlic and fresh garlic for a lot of things. You know, I feel like they have a different flavor. 
some dried oregano. Some more salt. And a little more olive oil. So this is gonna become the marinade for our chicken and our potatoes once the potatoes are done simmering. Might as well get the chicken in there. So I've got four chicken legs. I've got two thighs, uh, sorry, four thighs and four drumsticks. All right, so these potatoes are at a boil. They've been boiling for, I don't know, yeah, seven or eight minutes. Um, and so they're basically, well, we're, we're, we don't need to be them to be totally, totally tender all the way through, but you should be able to get a cake tester or a paring knife through with basically no resistance. You know, a little bit of chalkiness in the center is okay. Um, all right, so now we're gonna drain these. Now the idea here is that <clears throat> Potatoes, when you parboil them, they're gonna get a much better crust on them when you subsequently roast them because these starches um, start to, well, fully hydrate and gelatinize a little bit. Um, and so they can form a sort of more solid sheath on the surface of the potato that then gets crispy. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that, that can happen is that now when we toss these potatoes, we're gonna to toss them with the chicken and all those um, aromatics and the olive oil. Uh, when we toss them, what's going to happen is they're going to form a sort of slightly starchy, uh, as like a slurry on their surface. And of course, if you've seen my video on, you know, regular roast potatoes, not with the chicken, if you've seen my, vi my video or my recipes on roast potatoes, um, you'll have heard about that sort of starchy layer. Or if you've ever, you know, been to the UK or lived in the UK or grew up in the UK um, or have British friends who make roasties for you, um, this is the basic process we're doing that. You take po potatoes, you boil them, and then you toss them. And you can see there's this kind of slurry that forms on the surface. And that adds surface area and crunch. Um, and it's going to help with our chicken as well. That's one of the sort of magic elements of this dish, I find. All right, so we got everything nicely coated here. I'm going to get a sheet tray lined with parchment. And everything's just going to go right on here. Okay, I'm gonna kind of arrange my chicken and potatoes so that it's all kind of tetris together. You can do this with more, by the way. I did this yesterday with uh, six chicken thighs and six chicken legs, and they, and you know, really jammed the the whole the whole tray full. Um, you don't get quite as good browning on the potatoes when you do it that way because there's not as quite as much air circulation. Um, but you can certainly do it, um, and it comes out really delicious. All right, so. We want a little bit of air around everything, but it's okay if some things are touching. Um, and you definitely want that chicken skin side up as much as possible. Okay, so now I've got an oven set at 475 degrees, roast with convection. If you don't have convection in your oven, you can set it to 500 degrees instead. Uh, and the timing will basically be the same. Your browning might not be quite as good, but that's basically the only difference. All right. Oh, almost forgot. We're gonna take our other lemon. And just kind of nestle it in there as well. Okay. All right. So that's all going in the oven, and that's gonna roast until everything is crispy. So I, I'm gonna give it about a half an hour, and then come and check on it and flip things around maybe, and then give it another half hour. So about an hour total. But um, I'll come back and I will see you in 40 minutes or so. Um, a little bit longer than half an hour. Let's see where we're at. Looking pretty good, actually. Ooh, look at that. All right, I'm just gonna give... Uh, do I even need to turn these potatoes? I think maybe I'll just leave them as is. Yeah, I'll give the pan one... Turn these little guys on the edge. Maybe I'll give the pan one uh, turn so that everything crisps up evenly. And then we'll throw it back in for a little bit and I think we're pretty much done. Then I'll show you how I like to serve this at the end. Oh man, look at that. All right. Looking great. All right, so I'll be back in 10 more minutes. I think it's been close to about an hour total, maybe a little bit less than an hour total. Let's see where we're at. I think we look done. What do you think? Nice. 
So now these lemons that are a little bit caramelized, what you can do is flip them over and they will very easily release all their juices when they're hot like this. I don't want to get them all over chicken, potatoes, everything. Okay. Now let's get everything into a bowl. Whew, see how crispy everything is? And that potato gets all the flavor, <clears throat> all the flavor of that rendered chicken fat cooked right into it. It is unspeakably delicious. If you want, you can also scrape off this stuff. I'm not going to bother deglazing it, although you certainly could if you wanted to. You can get a little stock something, uh, get into that pan, and uh, dissolve all that stuff. All right. So the final thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, the rest of that marinade slash sauce vinaigrette that we made earlier and add it here. So now we have sort of the cooked version of it as well as the raw version of it. It's gonna coat everything, give it some flavor. We're gonna kind of gently fold it. I don't wanna mash it up too much. Okay, but that's about it. All right, and so what I like to do now is serve it just some simple arugula, Oop. some hot chicken, some hot potatoes, and they kinda, of, you know, kinda of put it on top of that arugula and the, uh, the lemoniness of the chicken and potatoes is really kind of enough to season those greens. I don't even, I don't, I don't feel like it even needs a separate dressing um, as long as you're using a kind of peppery green like this. All right. And <laughs> let me wipe my hands. And then let me finish it off with just a little bit of olive oil. All right, so there it is. Simple lemony sheet pan chicken. I guess you call it sheet pan chicken. Roasted chicken with potatoes. Tender, creamy, very lemony. <laughs> hot, hot. Try some of that crispy chicken. Hmm. Like I said, whew. with those drippings, that sauce and that olive oil, you don't really need anything else for the greens. It's got the, got the salt and the acid and everything kind of built in. Hmm. Delicious. All right. I'm going to go take some up to my dog. Guys, gals, non-binary pals. Um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.